Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex coming to you with a really quick video on a sheath I just completed for Tim from Indianapolis. So Tim sent me his Condor Golok and his Condor Nesmic. And he asked me to build him a piggyback system for these in which you could easily detach the two knives and carry them separately. Uh, I thought that was a really awesome idea and a cool request and I had a lot of fun building this sheath. It was uh, it was a little bit frustrating at a couple points because I tried my first few ideas for quick detach system. And by that we just mean no need for screwdrivers or any kind of uh, any kind of extra tools to take them apart and you know just quick something that you could do on the fly in the or out in the field wherever you are. So this is what I came up with for him. <clears throat> came out really nice. Um, he asked for an Exotac. Uh, fire rod on here and this is a great ferro rod if you guys are looking for something I can get great prices on these for you awesome awesome I love exotax stuff here is the Lansky LCD02 tactical sharpening rod so you just unscrew that cap on the end and you can see the rod inside there we'll just flick it out like that it's also got some ceramic braid ceramic braid it's got some ceramic blades on this end for uh, coarse sharpening and we got a detachable compass right here the Sunto Clipper and this thing is a great compass I think it's the best one for for the price about 20 bucks and uh, really high quality high quality material so alright so here's the sheath we got Cryptek Extreme Orange uh, Cryptek Extreme Hunter's Orange Black Basket Weave and flat black underneath it. He originally asked for the Cryptek as the main sheath for the Golok, but the thickness wasn't big enough to really give a sturdy uh, a sturdy build for a knife of that size, so I talked him into doing a thicker uh, flat black with a bunch of Cryptek on it to give it that flare. And you like that idea, so that's what we came up with. So, alright, real quick, <clears throat> how to detach the Nesmic from the Golok. It's riding on a couple Molly Locks, so you got to take, I don't think you can do it all in one movement, I mean, maybe you can take some practice, but you got to individually get the molly locks detached and then you can just slide it off. So it all rides on this plate that I created on there and you can see it stands off quite a bit, but there's a reason and it's because the ends of these clips are actually really wide right here. Um, and it just needs the space to go in there. So I'm including some extra hardware and extra spacers that are smaller than what's on here right now. And if you want to, you can switch out that, uh, switch out for the, the smaller hardware and spacers, and you'll still be able to detach and reattach your Nesmic, but you will have to kind of play with the tightness of the screw. So you have to make it wide enough to be able to get your get your molly locks in there and it's a you know it's a little bit of a struggle but it can be done and it'll give you a little bit lower profile and then the third option for how to carry those together is not recommended if you want to be able to separate them but if you know you're not going to need to then you can just take the spacers out all together use the smaller hardware and you want to you want to detach this plate here, put the molly locks on it, and then line it all up and screw it in place. You're not going to be able to get this on there when this, uh, you won't be able to put the Nesmic on when the plate has no spacers on it. So, alright, hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, let me know, Tim. Uh, it should be set up right now for the easiest way to get it on and off. So when you put it back on, you just make sure that they're seated all the way down and you'll just flex until you hear it click in. So the little uh, plate that I put on there will flex with you when you do that but you just squeeze the top of the molly lock and it'll push itself into place there. So when it's all rigged up like that you get a really strong system with no rattle um, I think it looks pretty cool too. So it's definitely got that quick detach function on there for you. Let's look at the knives in the sheath. So we have 
the Nesmic, and this guy doesn't really have anything to grab onto for uh, traditional retention on a knife. So I just created the mold, reheated the opening, and uh, and pinched it down just a little bit. So it's a little bit smaller than the handle itself, which means that it's going to be gripping it and doing a nice friction hold on it. So you're not going to get a Kydex click, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, if you push it in fast enough, you'll hear it bottom out and click, but it's not the same thing. Uh, but it does hold it in there nice and firm, and it looks really nice. And it's sort of the same deal with the machete here. You have a really, almost like a perfect circle. It's very flush with the blade stock on both sides, and there's no contour that goes, you know, tapering back in for a click. So this guy, I did the same thing. I just kind of, you know, reheated the, the opening and pinched it in a little bit tinier. Uh, but because it's such a big knife, it's not going to give you the same degree of retention. This will overcome, the weight of this knife will overcome the strength of Kydex, uh, you know, without any kind of riveting there. And if you put the rivets there, it's going to be kind of miserable to resheathe the knife. So uh, this was the best possible solution that I could offer. And I think it works out really well because where this knife is so big, obviously it's not just going to fall out, especially when you're carrying it. And it doesn't just fall out when it's upside down. If you shake it, let's see, I know I can get it to, there we go. You can get it to come part way out, but obviously you'd have to be like falling down a mountain or something like that. Uh, it's not just going to pop out. And when it does, it gets snagged up a little bit because the knife has such a drastic curve on the blade and it wants to fall straight down because of the weight of the handle but being that it's not an open back knife I know a lot of guys that do you know big curves on the knives or parangs or kukris or whatever they actually create they'll create a slit all the way down the back of the spine or just do it in two pieces however they do it but the back is open um, and that allows you to sort of like get the knife up and then draw it out like that um, in my case, I still do these as, you know, sort of a traditional taco style, and I just work with the spacing down below so that the knife can still draw out normally. So that's why you see it kind of like defined here and undefined here. It's because I had to create space around here. That way the, uh, the fatter tip of the knife would still be able to comfortably clear the, uh, the space inside the sheet. So... So anyway, it wants to fall out straight, but it can't because it gets snagged up somewhere in the tunnel. And uh, without your assistance to come out with its natural curve, it won't come out at all. So at the same time, you have a pretty smooth draw, pretty smooth resheath. And uh, I know it's not totally necessary, but I thought the thumb ramp on there was a nice addition just to sort of get that going. So, all right, Tim. Well, I hope you like your sheath, brother. And for all you out there in uh, YouTube land, I hope you like this as well. If you do, please go down and hit the subscribe button. Like, share, and comment. Let me know what you think of this, guys. And stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for tuning in. God bless.